Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the last video we covered rectangular and polar format complex numbers. And then in this video we'll just cover how we actually convert between the two. Super simple, so this shouldn't be a long video at all. Okay, so let's think about firstly for a rectangular, you've got A is equal to X plus J Y. And we want to convert that into A is equal to Z at an angle of theta. Right? And conversely, for polar format, we've got A is equal to Z, an angle of theta. And we're going to convert that into A is equal to X plus J, Y. Now, you may kind of feel like, well, what's with all these X, J, Y? Again, when you, start, when you start using them in terms of their true, I suppose, like when you attribute units to them, like using voltage and stuff like that, it becomes a lot easier. So... I'll do that in this video. I'll talk in terms of current and voltage and it will start to make more sense. Don't worry about it. Okay, so let's start off first with rectangular to polar format. So if we've got A is equal to X plus J, Y, now what we want to get is we want to get Z, right? And we want to get the angle. So we say that here, Z is equal to and the angle theta is equal to. Okay, now the formula for working out these two is we take the square root of x squared, which is here, plus y squared, which is here. Okay, now to work out the angle theta, this is going to look complicated, but it really isn't. You take the inverse of tan, so tan to the minus 1, and then of y over x and that's it that gives us our angle for our polar format so let's do an example of that and i'll show you what i mean when when we do examples and we attribute units to things it just it starts to make a lot more sense at least for me anyways so if we had in our circuit a total voltage of 8 minus j4 millivolts all right so that's our total voltage in rectangular format and we wanted to convert that into polar format so that we can see what would be its true value plus the phase shift of the voltage as well. So what we would do is we would say our Z component here is equal to X in this case is 8. So you take the square root and then 8 squared. And then it's plus. So our Y component here is the is 4. Right, so you just ignore the J, you got 4 squared. Now, some people will write, for example, minus 4 here, and that's okay, you can do you can do whatever. Obviously, the minus is important because it's minus J4, not plus J4. But when it comes to squaring and square rooting, it doesn't matter whether it's minus or plus, but it will matter when we convert for our angle. So I'll just leave that in there. Okay, so that's our Z component. Now, our angle is going to be tan to the minus 1, and then y, which is minus 4. This is where it's very important to include the, the minus if you have a minus. So minus 4 over, and then our x is 8. And that's it. So let's use our calculator. So we've got the square root of 8 squared plus, and you can do, for example, minus 4 squared. And so that gives you 8.94 volts. And then let's get our phase angle. So sh shift 10 to the minus 1. And then minus 4 over 8. It looks like I wrote 6 there. It should be an 8. Yeah, 8. And then so that gives us a negative angle of negative 26.56. So what we would say is that if our total voltage was... 8 minus J4 millivolts, then we would say voltage is equal to 8.94. I realize I wrote volts here, but it's millivolts. 8.9, 8.94 millivolts at a phase shift of negative or minus 26.56 degrees. And that's it. So you can see it's not, it's not complicated at all. Both these two things represent the exact same thing. One's in rectangular format, 8 minus J4 millivolts, and the other one's in polar format, 8.94 millivolts at an angle of negative 26.56.
Okay, so let's do the inverse way now. Let's do polar to rectangular. So here we're trying to find x and we're trying to find y. The j just remains the same always. So we'll just put x is equal to and then y is equal to. Okay, so we've got our z and our magnitude and we've got our phase angle and we want to get that into x and y. So what we do is we take the magnitude and we multiply it by the cosine of the angle. Super simple. And for our y component, our imaginary component, we take the magnitude and we multiply it by the sine of the angle. And that's it. I'm telling you guys, this stuff is easy. So let's say we had, let's say we had a current of 15.96 milliamps and we said that it was at a phase shift of minus 90 degrees. So how would we now convert that to rectangular format? So our X part is equal to 15.96 milliamps multiplied by cosine of minus 90. And then our Y part is 15.96 milliamps and it's multiplied by the sine of minus 90. So if you're good with your trig, you should spot something here, but I don't want to turn this into a, math, into a deep math lesson, so I'm not going to say anything yet. Okay, so let's just pull up our calculator. So you've got 15.96, and again, you don't need to write it in terms of amps, converting from milliamps to amps, because as long as you remember that you started off with milliamps, then your final answer will be in milliamps anyway, so it's fine. You've got 15.96 multiplied by cosine of minus... 90 and like i said if you was good at trig then you would know that the cosine of minus 90 is zero so 15.96 times zero is zero okay so our x component is zero our real component is zero and as you progress through your electrical engineering studies you will you'll know immediately why that it's zero but yeah don't worry about that for now okay so now again, same again, so 15.96, but this time, this time to find a y component, we're gonna multiply it by sine of minus 90. And so that gives us negative 15.96. So what we'd say then is that our y component is minus j 15.96. So our total current in this circuit here I is equal to zero minus J 15.96 milliamps. And that's it. And so honestly, guys, that's all there is to it. I mean, this is not, it's not complicated at all. And as you progress, you'll do this a lot quicker. When, when you're going through your different circuit analysis, this will get easy. So if it is difficult for now, just do some practice questions and trust me, you'll get very good at it. All right, guys, I'll see you next one. Peace.